Good morning, folks. We've got three top stories today. We'll keep an eye on our star, where the northern active region here is playing plasma spout fountain up into the corona. We go over to spaceweathernews.com and we shift to 193 angstroms to reveal the coronal holes and the active regions. Sunspots are not complex. Solar flaring is minor only. Plasma filaments are calm and no significant CMEs have left the sun in Earth's direction. Also up north, you can see a thin snaking coronal hole extension reaching down from the north. Solar wind is currently calming and entering ambient intensity. Geomagnetism is quiet as well. Would be a few more days before we have a chance for enhanced solar wind from those coronal holes. Top weather event yesterday struck Oman. Rare cyclone hits the region and some of the flooding images and video coming out of there are brutal to watch. Prayers go there. But now we're on to the science articles and we begin with the group showing how while there is a slight increase in ozone globally since the chemical signatures we've put up faded away, it's entirely accounted for by the southern hemisphere, the reduction of the Antarctic ozone hole. It outweighs the northern loss and the lower latitude losses, but its trend is also changing with the southern vortex getting more powerful year over year on average, and with Earth's weakening magnetic field, the increased proton bombardment will slowly eat away at those gains in the south as well as the rest of the world. Up next, it's a look at how the accretion boom scenario works for all kinds of space phenomena, Remember, it's not only the number one way to get a nova, but it's how galactic nuclei flare in the infrared, and it's how many stars get triggered into their X-ray flaring events, especially recurrently. It's why the extra material coming with the galactic current sheet into our solar system is such a scary issue for our star at the exact time as we get a galactic magnetic reversal. And folks, in terms of the nova level elements, this is where scientists studying those nova level isotopes actually have an easier time envisioning recent nearby nova events than most regular people who think that that would destroy the Earth and the solar system. So when I saw the elemental review for solar flares, I knew it would be helpful. The sun's flaring events work energetic particle flows out into space and wildly varying oxygen, iron, and even carbon content, but also to a slightly lesser degree, all the elements up through lead, just from solar flares. Every known element was detected in the solar wind by the Genesis mission back in the 90s. The stars are chemical factories, and they don't need to end their lives to make them. Just something between solar flares and a recurrent nova. And it turns out that's the only way to explain a phenomenal amount of the evidence of Earth's disaster cycle. It's getting time to do another recap of the catastrophism updates as well, so reviewing the movie, postludes, and supplements in the series link right below the video in the description box is a great idea. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.